In this video, I'm going to show you how to implement the content enricher pattern in RabbitMQ. If you're watching this on YouTube and you haven't already subscribed, please do so by clicking on the subscribe button. So let's begin by talking about what is the content enricher pattern. The content enricher pattern is a in enterprise integration pattern where you have a basic message and it gets transformed into another message called an enrich message. This enrich message has more data than the original message. The content enrichment pattern is a enterprise integration messaging pattern. Inside this pattern, there is a enricher which takes a basic document and then it produces an enrich document. In order to enrich the document, it needs to communicate with some external resource. And that's the responsibility of the enricher is to become a gateway to that resource. And that's basically how you create the content enricher pattern. So now let's look at how we do that in RabbitMQ. Okay, so now let's take a look at how we set up the consumers and the queues within Rabbit itself. So here I have a graphical representation of how I configure the virtual host. The way that you create a content enricher is to create another program that acts as a consumer to some request queue. And then once you process that request, you send the results to a result queue. So in this setup, I will have an external program that's done here. And then this is going to be in my Java program, which, which will create a connection, right? And then that connection creates two channels, one channel for the consumer and then one channel that will be used to publish to this uh, result queue. So the consumer is going to be binded to my request queue, which I call IP lookup request. And the result queue is going to be called IP lookup results. And what happens is when a message comes in to this queue, it's going to be consumed by this consumer and then this consumer is going to call my IP lookup web service, right? And then once it finds the information and then it, it enriches that document, it will publish that document to my result queue. And that is basically how you implement a content enricher in RabbitMQ. Now let's see it in action. Here I have my program running in the, in the uh, IDE. And I'm going to use the RabbitMQ management console to publish a message to this queue. So here I have two queues, the request queue and the result queue. So if I go to the request queue and I scroll to the bottom, I, there's a way for me to publish a message. And this message will be in the JSON format. And so now when I publish you, in the bottom, you see there's going to be some output that basically indicates that we're handling that request. As you can see, it also publishes an enriched JSON back to the result queue. So now if I go to my queue, you'll see that there's already some messages in here. And if I go to the results, I can check out what those results look like. I'm not going to requeue them because I do want to remove those messages from the queue. And so you can see the first message was that was already in there, right? And then you can see the second one, right? The second one, you can see there is a, a enriched document in that request in that results queue, right? And if I get it, there's no more. Right? So let's do this again, but with a different IP address. Okay, so I'm going down to my publish message section of that queue inside the web management console. And in, and in this case, I will publish a different IP address. And you can see from the output on the bottom that it got the uh, re request from IP info that IO with the IP address and it's calling this web service and it's requesting a JSON response. And you can see that, for this request is actually getting 
outside of the United States. So let's take a look at what the results look like. Okay, so you can see that this IP actually is in the Indonesia. Okay, so I just shown you how that content enrichment program works. So now let's take a look at the source code. Okay, so this IP lookup enricher is the name of my program and it basically has the one big main for simplicity. All right, so first we set up the connection to RabbitMQ and then we create two channels, one for the publish, one for the publisher and the one for the consumer. The one thing you need to know about the the enricher is that it's both a consumer and a publisher because it has to consume the message from the request queue and then it has to publish the enriched message to the result queue, right? So it has to be both the consumer of the request and the publisher to the result queue. After I set up the channels, I create a consumer and in that consumer, it basically receives the the JSON request message, it gets the IP address to to look up, and then it calls the web service here, right? And then finally, once it it finishes doing the uh, content enrichment, and then it publishes that message to this IP lookup results queue, and only after it successfully called the web service, it can then acknowledge that message. Right, so this is very important in RabbitMQ because if this web service fails, we want to keep that message in the queue right? so that when we restart, we can actually handle that message. So that's why we, we, we manually acknowledge the messages on our own. Right, and then finally, the last code is basically to bind this consumer to this queue. So that's how you create a content enricher in RabbitMQ. I will post the source code on my website, so if you're not there, please go there to get it. The video that you saw is a high level design, and if you're new to RabbitMQ, it may seem very abstract. I'm confident that if you take my RabbitMQ course, that you will have all the skills that you need to implement that design. In my course, I teach you the fundamentals of messaging concepts, as well as certain message patterns that you need to know, such as how to create a store and forward queue, and how to create task queues, as well as implementing remote procedure calls. These skills are critical in leveraging RabbitMQ to improve your architecture and design. To take the course, you can go to mqmastery.com slash rabbitmq. In there, you'll be able to, to join the course, and I hope to see you there.